Rise of Kingdoms seems to be cracking down really heavily on not only people who are doing refund scamming, but also people who are just sending resources within the game. And today we're going to talk about all of that stuff, as well as the legal implications of what could happen to some of these players. What's going on guys. Cheers. Now there's been a lot of talk within the community about refund scamming and all sorts of other shady business going on behind the scenes in rise of kingdoms. Obviously there's been multiple content creators that have come out making videos talking about really the extent to which some players are going to get an unfair and quite frankly, a illegal advantage in rise of kingdoms. Uh, a lot of what these players are doing is actually punishable by law, like objectively. And we're going to talk about that later in the video, but on top of that, we have players and I've had multiple people reach out to me on discord. The link will be in the description if you want to join my discord, but they've reached out and said, Hey, Omni, there is a lot of cracking down that's being done on just people sending resources to each other for example this player got this message just a couple of days ago saying please stop acquiring resources in an abnormal manner now this is something that lilith has done for a long time right if you get a ton of resources flooding your account you will sometimes see something like this they do threaten uh to take some uh, sort of penalty they have taken steps of removing some of those resources from these players i also had this message shared with me with a resource review from just a day later from a completely different player saying that the system recently flagged you for acquiring an abnormally large amount of resources in a short time so this is this is uh going on right now more than usual and i think this is actually a big problem and probably not one that lilith should be focusing on as much as they are now let me explain obviously the intention behind them putting penalties on players gaining a ton of resources is because they're trying to combat resource sellers and resource bots but look okay over 90 percent, probably over 95 percent of the player base in this game is not buying resources from a resource seller or a bot uh, and the big issue is from the players that sent me those screenshots um, some people are saying that they're getting these notifications when they receive like 300 million resources right which it sounds like a lot to maybe a new player but that's nothing that is nothing if you're just an average t5 kvk player who's open field fighting like that is not a lot of resources and I've said this openly, especially back when Lilith tried to implement a cap on how many resources can be transferred between players. Um, I don't think that a cap is a good strategy. And I think that these penalties for resource uh, resource transfers are a bit ridiculous, right? Because again, a huge, huge, huge majority of the player base, I would be willing to bet 90 to 95% of the player base is not transferring resources um in a way that would be against the terms of service or terms of use that you agree to when you play rise of kingdoms right and most of the time it's just players transferring resources from a farm to their main account or from a player who's quitting the game to their friend's account or something of that nature oftentimes it's a free-to-play player just giving resources to a t5 whale so that way they have a higher chance of fighting in kvk and winning uh, and winning the rewards for the entire kingdom right that's a good way for a free-to-play player to contribute if they don't have those meta commanders so realistically i think lilith cracking down on this specifically is not a good strategy it, it's just not okay nine times out of ten it's just players who are just trying to play the game right and so if they implement some sort of cap or punishment for players who are just trying to enjoy kvk you're punishing many players for the faults of only a few it's like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. it's just way too heavy-handed and you're punishing a lot of innocent people which is just stupid the truth is guys lilith is never gonna solve the bot problem they're just not and so for them to to implement these penalties to players for a problem that can't be solved in the way that they're attempting to solve it just makes the game worse for everybody i mean realistically the only way to combat botting and resource selling in the game is for lilith to hire enough real human beings to evaluate individual transactions on a one-to-one -one basis like you need an actual team of dozens of people who can manually review every single transaction and that is it's just gonna even even if they outsourced this uh, and hired people 
in a country where their labor is extremely cheap it's still more money than I think Lilith would be willing to spend on something like this right and so they're trying to implement you know AI and and bots and algorithms to try and determine these things and in reality you can't do it literally every single MMO has this problem every single massively multiplayer online game has a bot problem or a resource selling problem i mean even companies like blizzard world of warcraft these are massive companies that make way more money than lilith does okay and they have basically a, a war chest full of money that they could throw at this problem and even they still have this problem because it's just to them it's not financially viable to fix the issue which is it's i get that i understand that right um and so to to sit here as a player and expect them to solve the problem is unrealistic because if it were that easy to solve then why is every mmo having this problem right like that's you know it's just logic like if if, if no one's figured out a solution why would lilith figure it out right and that's my point so them being heavy-handed with punishing real players for just enjoying the game hoping that 10 percent of the time they actually catch somebody performing something that's illegal like it's just stupid okay it's just stupid and i'm i'm not a fan of them of them implementing penalties for a problem that they're not solving okay next i want to talk about refund scammers refund scammers i think there's a better term for that we'll talk about that in a second but i think this is a much more serious thing uh that has much bigger implications and honestly it doesn't surprise me at all okay every mobile game has had players that will well up and refund the purchases ever since game of war fire age ever since the beginning of clash of clans ever since the app store had a refund option and you know somebody's five-year-old got a hold of their device and made a bunch of purchases and the parent realized they could refund it ever since then it's been a huge problem even when Fortnite came out on mobile they were losing a ton of money from in-game purchases because players realized that the Apple App Store is actually kind of lenient with doing refunds and this isn't so much the case anymore Apple has really cracked down on it and made it much harder to do but you know in 2017 2018 parents would see that their kids spent $200 on Fortnite dances and they would just refund it and then people were like wait a minute that was really easy and that system got abused now Chiskel in his video actually referred to getting refunds in this manner as social engineering and this is actually a corner of the internet for reasons that I won't get into here that I am vaguely familiar with so I figured I would break this down a little bit for you guys in case you don't really understand how these players are so easily getting refunds for rise of kingdoms and pretty much any other mobile game essentially what social engineering is is when you or somebody that you hire convinces a company that you purchase something from to get a refund for said item now this is done socially because usually it's done by reaching out to support and convincing a real human on the other end of that support system that something outside your control happened during the transaction that led to you legitimately not receiving the item or service or that it was done by mistake or somebody else did it with your card or whatever the case might be and if you're good at convincing them then they might believe you that you actually didn't get the good or service and they will then refund you for that despite you actually getting the good or service and the reason you might hire somebody to do this which is why there are all of these uh services out there saying that they'll get you half price off of your bundle purchases uh, you know the reason that you would hire them is because they have experience in the art of social engineering these people do it for a living they know what to say they know how to say it they know how to sound convincing when they're straight up lying somebody who's exceptionally clever and deceptive will be much more convincing than somebody who is reaching out to support who has never tried to scam in this sort of way before and that knows that what they're doing is wrong right they're going to be nervous they're more likely to misspeak or you know go through a poorly thought out lie and then they get caught lying so these people that you're hiring to socially engineer your account are really good at it and that's why it's a big problem companies all companies are falling victim to social engineering you can do this with literally anything you can buy something on amazon and reach out to amazon support and tell them that it never showed up and they have 
you know systems in place to verify if what you're saying is true and sometimes depending on the value of the good they won't even question it but other times if it's like a camera or a, a macbook or something like that they'll open an investigation and see if what you're doing or what you're saying is true and so it comes as no surprise to me that players have been doing this in rise of kingdoms for bundles and gems now obviously right anybody who's caught doing this is a piece of shit they're a piece of shit i mean they deserve the bans and restrictions that lilith is putting on their account that's actually i mean you cannot argue that and look I don't mean the players that accidentally buy a bundle purchase right and I, honestly I'm not even talking about people who max purchase a bundle one time and they have buyer's remorse and they just see if they can get away with refunding it and they do I don't even care about that okay if you do a $400 refund on rise of kingdoms you're not really making a big impact and you're not really moving the needle you're not it's just not that much in rise of kingdoms okay what are you gonna get a few days worth of speed up 75,000 gems like sure is it unfair yes of course it's unfair you're literally stealing from Lilith technically speaking okay it's not stealing it's actually fraud and we'll talk about that in a moment but again I think there's a, a certain amount of wiggle room where like you know sure you have buyer's remorse or whatever like these things happen you know Fortnite actually tells you that you have a certain number of refunds that you can do like if I think it's like one or three like refunds that you can perform on your account because they know that sometimes accidents happen and even though there's you know systems put in place to prevent you from making a purchase without a password or face ID or something like that things still happen somehow okay and they understand that right so even Fortnite is just like hey you know first time you're refunding fine it is what it is whatever your reason is whatever it's fine right and because these are digital goods like it doesn't cost anything for me to have gems it's just a loss of on on their part for gems that I could have bought with money like they're missing out on revenue but they're not I'm not stealing anything of value from them it's just a number on a screen so it's not that big of a deal if you're doing it in small amounts right uh, so I'm not referring to them when I'm saying you're a piece of shit I'm saying you know if you're refunding thousands of dollars in the game now you're a piece of shit because you're influencing the outcome of a PvP that's a huge problem and your enemies are spending real money to combat you and that's why these players deserve to be banned now look I am not a lawyer okay and this is not legal advice and this entire video is just educational purposes okay and I have to say that because it's true that's that's the point of this video but from my understanding ending a refund scam is just a cute way of saying fraud and I can only speak for the laws that are in the United States and specifically in New York that's the state that I live in but the dictionary defines fraud as wrongful or criminal deception intended to result in financial or personal gain and that's what this is you are trying to personally gain off of getting the bundles for this pay to win game at the expense of Lilith right and of course again they're missing out on the money you could have spent to to get these bundles but also a lot of times these companies get fined from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store because of all these refunds right these transactions it's not free to transact money through a digital ecosystem right they go through PayPal they go through credit card companies and all those places take a cut of that purchase and if there's a refund you know just because there's a refund that goes through doesn't mean that Lilith gets back the fees that they're spending on these transactions so Lilith is actually losing in that way and fraud is actually a big deal now in the state of New York where I live if you refund and commit fraud of any value over a thousand dollars worth of goods or services or whatever it is and you actually got those goods and services and benefited from them that is considered a class e felony and you could spend one to three years in prison for that for a thousand dollars right and we're talking about players who have refunded tens hundreds of thousands of dollars in rise of kingdoms like that is extreme felony that's a massive crime okay that is a massive crime and class e is the lowest class you can face up to like 15 years in prison for the amount of money that these players are refunding in a mobile game so let me be clear if you are refunding thousands of dollars in rise of kingdoms you are committing a felony and you are actually a criminal but of course saying a refund scam that doesn't sound that bad right but but let's just be real here now you know if I'm being honest the odds of Lilith pursuing legal action in any country outside of the country that they operate in is, is pretty small okay and if I'm not mistaken I'm pretty sure Lilith is in Hong Kong or in China I don't really know honestly so if you live in a country outside of there you're probably uh, not gonna face any sort of legal action um you, you very well could and they could 
do it they could actually do it but from what i've seen online and again i'm not a lawyer not legal advice okay but international lawsuits are typically really tricky they're really expensive it's hard to pin down the individual you have to get governments to cooperate right and so we're talking about you know the usa and china like let's be real okay it's a mobile game who gives a fuck international lawsuits very tricky and over a mobile game probably not going to happen but it absolutely could so realistically the most that's going to happen is these players are going to have their accounts banned suspended permanently uh you know restricted in some way um perhaps we could see ip bans device id bans things like that all of all of which could pretty easily get circumvented but that's the extent to which I imagine Lilith will combat this. But one thing that a lot of people aren't talking about is Lilith's role in this entire refund scamming system. And again, before we get into this, I just want to reiterate, if you are doing refund scams, you are a piece of shit, right? No matter what role Lilith plays, you doing the refund scam shit. But there's definitely something to be said about Rise of Kingdoms as a game that could even allow something like this to happen now i have talked at length in multiple different videos about the ways in which rise of kingdoms legitimately tries to get players addicted to their game and all the ways that they encourage you to spend money once you are and i'm not going to go into all that here i've made multiple videos about it if i remember i'll try to link them down below but lilith uses literally the exact same methods that casinos and slot machine companies use to get people addicted to rise of kingdoms but the difference between rise of kingdoms and a slot machine is that you're not just pulling a slot machine in this game you're fighting other players and that's a whole new layer of complexity because if you cheat in a system where it's a slot machine the only person that can get in trouble is you but if you cheat in a pvp scenario well now you're ruining the experience for other players which is much worse in my opinion and in order for lilith to make five six figures maybe even seven figures off of a player that's addicted to their game they have to make it pay to win to some extent listen we all know okay rise of kingdoms is pay to win we know that's the case okay anyone who doesn't think that hasn't been playing long enough to realize it and usually if you're addicted to a game you probably want to win at that game as well and in a game where performance and money are so closely knit it is no wonder that people are trying to find a way to game the system for example okay look at call of duty or look at warzone specifically okay there's been a, a long history of players using aim bots players using wall hacks and all sorts of various other cheating mechanisms to gain an advantage in that game but in rise of kingdoms you can't really do that I mean there's not really a skill based component outside of like let's say the strategy you would use to progress across the kbk map so the only way to cheat is to spend more money and unfortunately cheating in a way that gets you more money is technically called fraud and that's actually illegal you're breaking the law i mean i almost want to empathize with the players that are performing these refund scams i mean they are literally like addicted to rise of kingdoms they are addicted to the amount of dopamine that is released when they perform well in this game because that's how the game was built the game was built by lilith to be addicting for these players it's like getting mad at a crackhead for buying crack when you're the one offering to sell him crack like it gets to a point where like they're they're just so invested in this game that they'll do anything they'll literally break the law to perform better that's not something a rational human being would do you would not rationally and reasonably commit a felony to perform well in a mobile game unless there's something wrong or you're addicted to it so if Lilith knows that their game is addicting because that's how they've built it they that's been their goal since day one should they have some sort of accountability or responsibility in this entire scheme of people refunding purchases that are made in their game I mean think about it okay if you walk into Walmart and you would try to buy a hundred thousand dollars worth of products somebody there is going to raise an eyebrow and the probability that that transaction is going to go through is really low but in rise of kingdoms hey spend away crackhead in a game where you can spend unlimited amounts of money surely somebody out there is addicted enough to find a way to actually do it and if they're not performing some sort of refund scam it's going to be something else that's very detrimental people go into credit card debt for games like rise of kingdoms that's a huge problem so if rise of kingdoms just put a limit on the amount that you could spend in the game surely we could avoid some large amount of this behavior but 
will they ever do that let's be real what i'm saying is that games that have a limit to the amount you can spend on them to gain an advantage don't have this problem that rise of kingdoms is having right now if refund scamming is a legitimate way to gain a massive advantage in your game perhaps it's the game's fault for being built that way after all you can't have players refunding six figures worth of purchases if you can't make six figures worth of purchases to begin with so again i sort of empathize with these players even though they are pieces of shit for ruining the experience for many and for literally being criminals but rise of kingdoms is definitely partially at fault here they've intentionally built an addicting game that has a system where you can spend unlimited amounts of money what do you think is going to happen that is a recipe for disaster and if they didn't see that coming well uh, hey surprise I think that might just be the price you pay if you're willing to build a game that is this pay to win anyway guys those are my thoughts and opinions on the topic I would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below if you made it all the way to the end of the video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other players might see it as always if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video we are so close to 30,000 subs it's insane anyway with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace